You gotta watch me because I can go down these paths sometimes. It's day 24 since October 25th, 7.3 earthquake. I know I put 7.2 there. But and nothing happened, of course. Thank goodness. We all feel so much better, so much trusting that just because the internet is blocked, just because these death plumes are never ending, and it's at least 40 to 100 years down the road before we can even consider that one, to pacify the people on the planet, they're going to put off a big show where they're going to remove the rods from Fukushima. Um, and let me break that down a little tiny bit for everybody. That, that creature you're seeing there, well, the interior does not look like that. But that's what they want you to think. Okay? Because that's what it looks like. And this has nothing to do with that. Is that very hard for anybody to work out from there? Because that thing got torn apart. Okay? That's that's destroyed. The explosion leveled everything around it. It threw rods up to two miles away. The three reactors alongside of it are missing. And they think the temperatures are around 9,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And so all the rods from the earthquakes gets shoved down in those uh, pits of hell. And that whole site would swallow itself and turn into a big sinkhole if it didn't have all that water going on to it. It would melt all the rocks and gravel and dirt around it. And they wouldn't be able to get back on that site. Period. And that Unit 3 has mock fuel in it. It's melted. And that's a million times worse than Chernobyl. It's a million times more deadlier than a typical reactor's uh, fuel. And it's a concoction of hell itself, literally. But they want you to focus in on this picture here. See? Everything's fine. Right? Yeah, it looks like that on the outside, but on the inside it's like that. No, it don't look like that. They went in there and cleaned it all up, right? Because there was rods everywhere that if a little piece was right here, it wouldn't finish that sentence. But they, the most vulnerable of society, went in there with no knowledge, no understanding, and picked it up and lugged it all out. That's why they're creating all these robots to go do that same job. But right now, the PR campaign says, see, everything's good. We got Molly Maid comes in there every day and shines the rails for the workers so they don't slip on their fingerprints. Yeah? <coughs> I don't know about you, but... Sorry, I'm not buying into that one. And neither is Hattrick Penry. And he has made a case from Freedom of Information results that this is a huge hoax to feed the population, to pacify them. So the, the painted teleprompt readers can regurgitate something out. And AP and writers will break with these stories. And all the media will read those paragraphs. Excuse me, under... Let me get rid of that. And that's how they're going to play that one out. And no one's going to talk about three melted reactors hemorrhaging into the ocean. They're going to talk about... Um, they're not going to talk about that, that's for sure. And I'll come on down to your comments in a moment. But I wanted to start the video off, make sure everybody understands what's really truly going on here today. That that pole there does not look at all, not even a little tiny, itty bitty, tiny bit, like that pole there. Because... You can see that these buildings were flattened. These were just boom, beyond imagination. The concussion from these types of explosions are sending shrapnel two miles away. And that shrapnel was uh, rods. I'm laughing because it's gallows laugh. And then he came in with the bulldozers and just buried these things. Because what else are you going to do, right? You can't get within 100 feet of them without, uh, you know, being terminally 
permanently affect it within five or ten minutes. It, you know, if you go a lot closer, you're not you're just going to fall down. You know, like, hmm, that feels a little weird. No one's getting your body back either. You know, like the seagulls in Sellafield, England, where that eight million liters a day is hemorrhaging, they have to shoot the seagulls if they land. Okay, they've been doing that for many years, and they'll be, who knows now, but they most likely will be doing it for many years to come. So there's your pretty little unit four, and it has nothing to do with that, okay? I don't know what pull that is, but it ain't inside of that creature there, see? And it has no relationship. The whole building is destroyed, the back's broken, it was picked up by hundreds of thousands of tonnage underneath it, just drove it up near and broke their, those pools, and that's why they're pumping water, and they can't just go in there and plug that water, okay? They can't just... You know, call up the local plumber, get on in there, boy. Because every country on the planet has tried to come there and help them because they have developed this special technology to get in there and with equipment and everything else and try to get that job done. But they have rejected that because they don't want the international community going home post-traumatic stress disorder, stepping over all those bodies and realizing that they got to bring the whole world in. Because if not... It's boy, boy, you know, like, uh, these plumes have been coming across the ocean now for almost a thousand days. Think of Japan's balloons. In 1944, traveled across the ocean in about three days. And you have to think about, you know, I'll bring up that list for you. It's right from Wikipedia. And read the names on that. I'm going to leave that up there for a while. I'll come over to the comment section. And just to make sure everybody reads that stuff. That's where those bombs in 1944 from Japan went up and got into the jet streams at 100 miles an hour. So every 24 hours, that's 2,400 miles. And came over and landed in all those counties. This is an HP News Network special report. Okay, YouTubers and anti-nuke activists, this is Patrick Penry, and this is day one of the Dog and Pony Show with TEPCO as they attempt to convince us that they're pulling fuel rods from the Unit 4 spent fuel pool. And why do I say that? Because there's these FOIA documents, Freedom of Information Act documents, that paint a completely different picture of a catastrophic damage to Unit 4, walls blown out, cracks in the pool, inventory, water inventory lost, a Zerk fire, melt on the floor. These are from the Freedom of Information Act documents pertaining to Fukushima, and it paints a completely different picture. In fact, that's why many of us are scratching our heads and say, well, what are you talking about? You're unloading from spent fuel pool number. Well, that's impossible. I mean, if you are, it would just be a few of the fresh assemblies that had never been used before. But the non-checkerboarded fuel that was packed tightly, okay, and they didn't space the hot ones out with cool ones in between, it lost all the water, they got extremely hot, they burst into fire, they have a zirconium cladding fire, and there was a major uh, catastrophe to the spent fuel at Unit 4. In fact, they discussed pouring sand in a lead slurry. It was that bad. There was actually a discussion, where did this information come from? Directly from TEPCO. John Moniger and others were embedded directly with TEPCO as events, uh, not as they happened, but not very long afterwards, they had a team on the ground there, and TEPCO was giving them this and asking them, hey, should we pour sand in here with lead? What do you guys think? Yeah, that's what they were asking the NRC. Help us out. Should we pour a sand and lead slurry into this spent fuel pool number four? And even number three, they're asking that about. Okay, so understand that what this massive group of mainstream media outlets and mainstream alternative outlets that I've been clear for a long time is under establishment control, they are perpetuating a hoax. What is the hoax? That the worst of the worst did not happen in Unit 4, and they're gonna, it's going to be dangerous, but they're going to try to get the fuel out. Okay, because the option is being honest with the American public and the world and Japan and Tokyo that what really did happen in Unit 4. And in these documents, again, don't take it from me, they're free and available to the public, and you should look through them because I tell you, in just an hour or two of searching through the FOIA documents, you can put together your own article in Unit 4 easily. 
easily. And a little bit more than that on Unit 3. It's a little less information on Unit 3, but you still really could. I mean, so don't wait on me to write on Unit 3 that it lost water inventory too. I have evidence on that as well. You do it. You do it. Help us out. Help us out. We need a lot of help. Okay, so the hoax is to convince you they're going to do this, but how are they going to pull this off? They're going to show you generic footage. They're never going to walk a film crew, even though they say the radiation levels have you know, dropped and it's not that bad. They're never going to walk a film crew down Unit 1, 2, and 3, showing us a newspaper with current events and a date on it, proving the date, and then walk up the platform into Unit 4 and show us the condition of the spent fuel pool, show us the operation. They could have already done this. They could have. This is 980-something days now uh, post Fukushima, and we have still yet to see any definitive footage that shows beyond any reasonable doubt that the the depicted footage or picture is from Unit 4. It could be down from south of the, the Diani nuclear facility, or it could be from Unit 1 or Unit 2. So keep that in mind. They have yet, and this is in and of itself very suspicious. They've been unable to provide any consistent footage proving the condition of the fuel in Unit 4 as they claim it to be. So today there's a BBC article, a bunch of articles coming out. The first day was successful. They got some uh, fuel out. And TEPCO, thanks to Maureen, I have a, a link I'll give you to TEPCO has a report out, and they have some pictures you can look at. I want you to examine these pictures. And again, note, there's nothing to identify definitively that the pictures, when these pictures were taken, that I can find, or that they were from Unit 4 spent fuel pool. And I, like I say, it's, it seems to be a common thread throughout all of this footage and pictures that I've been seeing that at no time can you look at a picture and say, yeah, this is definitely Unit 4. No doubt about it, hands down, and there's the fuel down there. And people are standing around casually in some of these videos that I'm seeing. Why can they not walk down with there with the camera? Why can they not show us a clear, uh, visible uh, information that we need to see to confirm this and they've been unable to do that and again it just bolsters my case in the case of the FOIA documents that indicate in these conversations and emails the NRC and TEPCO were aware early on how bad Unit 4 was. There's a crack. I mean they even talk about the junk shot trying to get something to you know two compounds you mix to fill the crack so they can add water to it. I mean it, it was very serious and they knew it early on. Now naturally like any cover-up Initially, some information does come forth, and that was Jaxco and Castro, who were open right in the very beginning and said, "Yeah, it's lost inventory." You know, they discussed, "Should we put a sand and lead slurry? We're going to try and refill it. We're going to put a sand and lead slurry in it." That's how bad it was. Later, when TEPCO and the Japanese government had a fit over it, that's when these stories were recanted, and this massive hoax, this propaganda campaign, went underway. It's very revealing, too, folks. Because when this is all said and done and they've just showed generic footage the whole time, I mean, for me, it's a pretty much clear case. I mean, if I have to take this to the court of public opinion, I'm making my case and it it's, looks good for me. It looks very good for me and very bad for them. So until such time as they can prove their case and they're still using generic pictures and generic footage that could be from a nuclear plant anywhere in Japan, right, we have to be skeptical. We have to be suspicious and we have to to hold them a suspect. We know TEPCO now are known liars, folks. They're known liars, and so has the NRC and all these agencies and all these media outlets. Come on. You guys got to understand this is a big hoax. What did Morpheus say? Uh, that the Matrix um, is a world that, that pulled over your eyes to blind you from the real world, right? It's the illusion pulled over your eyes to blind you from the real world. I'm butchering his quote. I'll include it in this video. I apologize for that. But that's a perfect quote to end this video on. So I'll link to the uh, TEPCO report. You can look at that. You can examine the TEPCO pictures today. Again, generic pictures. Good luck finding anything to prove beyond any doubt to me that that is Unit 4. And again, I say they couldn't say anything else. Would you expect them to be honest and say, hey, Tokyo, you got 48 hours. You guys need to ride out. You know, right? Hey, I'm just keeping it real. All right. Patrick Penry, appreciate you joining me for this short video. Day one of Dog and Pony Show. I will report back as this as further news develops, okay? Thank you. Patrick Penry over and out. This has been an HP News Network special report.